Wow. Yeah. 
Eastwood Anaba is the founder and president of the Eastwood Anaba Ministries, EAM, headquartered in Bozatanga in the Upper East region of Ghana. Eastwood Anaba Ministries is dedicated to influencing the body of Pastor Eastwood Anaba is the founder and president of the Eastwood Anaba Ministries, EAM, headquartered in Bogatanga in the Upper East region of Ghana. Eastwood Anaba Ministries is dedicated to influencing the body of Christ to be a repositioned and revived people of God ready for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. He and his wife serve as the senior pastorate of the Desert Pastures, Fountain Gates Chapel, Bogatanga. Fountain Gates Chapel is a people-oriented and missions-hearted ministry with over 270 member ch churches worldwide. Pastor Eastwood is a revivalist with an uncompromising message on the Holy Ghost, righteousness, discipline and order in the body of Christ with a powerful emphasis on the love of God. He has authored 112 books including God's End Time Militia and The Love Revolution. Grace Mountain with God's Love And God's honor, let us welcome God's servant. It's an encounter tonight. It's an encounter tonight. Rebecca so sefreniga vasiz of Rahaniga. Come on. Come on. Jesus, we came. Just for a touch. Overwhelm 
Can you go for the next one minute? Everything can turn around. We just had an encounter. Wherever you are. Outside, inside, lift up your voice.
is an encounter. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Something unusual. Anaba Ministries is dedicated to influencing the body of Christ. Four different people. The Reverend is with Anaba. They saw him in Grace Mountain. And it looked like a joke to me. I, I will only say amen. But I never believed it will happen. And then see it happen today. You have no idea what this means. If you knew, if you knew. I was praying today. The Lord told me, it's my own character. I didn't still believe it until I saw him land here. We will never be the same. We will never be the same. I said, Grace Mountain, we will never be the same. You better accept it. God brought him. And he doesn't need any introduction. A gift to the world, a gift to Ghana, and tonight a gift to us. And he's going to be with us for two solid days. Please, please, let what should happen, happen. Open up your heart and let it happen. I won't say much, but tonight he is here with our mama, Mama Rosemary. And he came with some leadership leadership of the um, EA ministry. If you are here, let's celebrate them. Thank you for 
and some pastors join him here. Let's celebrate them. But we are in very critical seasons. And God at every stage will send someone to clear the way for others. And I believe that tonight we have such a voice in our midst. Grace Mountain, let our hearts be open and let us receive this apostle from the Lord. There is a video introduction and the moment it is done, you are going to receive God's servant on this altar. Can we go? Pastor Eastwood Anaba is the founder and president of the Eastwood Anaba Ministries, EAM, headquartered in Bogatanga in the Upper East region of Ghana. Eastwood Anaba Ministries is dedicated to the body, the body of Christ to be a region and positioned and revived people of God ready for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. He and his wife and his wife serve as the senior pastorate of the de pastor eastwood pastor eastwood anaba is, is the founder and president of the eastwood anaba ministries eam headquartered in bogatanga in the upper east region of ghana eastwood anaba ministries is dedicated to influencing the body of christ to be a repositioned and revived people of god ready for the return of our lord jesus Jesus Christ. He and his wife serve as the senior pastorate of the Desert Pastures, Fountain Gates Chapel, Bogatanga. Fountain Gates Chapel is a people oriented and missions hearted ministry with over 270 member churches worldwide. Pastor Eastwood is a revivalist with an uncompromising message on the Holy Ghost, righteousness, discipline, discipline and order in the body of Christ with a powerful emphasis on the love of God he has authored 112 books including God's end time militia and the love revolution grace mountain with God's love and God's honor let us welcome God's servant Reverend Eastwood Anaba holy name dear father we thank you we magnify you we exalt your holy name we ask that your spirit will move in our midst and that you touch every life your holy name is glorified forever amen you may be seated and god bless you come on give a big clap offering to jesus please, please. amen wonderful Amen, amen, amen. You know, I was, I was, I was home today when um, the man of God sent me a, a picture. I said, "This is one o'clock, and people are already in the building, and that is the way his people come to church." I said, "I've never seen this anywhere." Um, that. that a meeting, a meeting which is starting at five o'clock. The people are there at one. Uh, when, what are they saying? Eight in the morning. Ascending. Are they? Are they? Are they? Are Jama, Jama, move on. I'm so many of you. I mean, but 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 it's amazing. Um, 
for me, I think it's such a great honor and a blessing to be here. And we equally don't take it for granted at all. We, I don't think it's everybody who gets this kind of blessing. Um, this is a very great work. I mean, it's a, it's a great work. I remember the first time somebody drew my attention to what um, Man of God was doing on the internet it was um, internet, Facebook, and all those things it was it was uh, Alpha. Hour, you, know. <laughs> you know, I had I had this I had this spiritual daughter who is into politics, and um, she came and we we're just talking. And when she was leaving, along the line she said, "Daddy, have you heard of Alpha Hour?" I said, "What about the Omega Hour?" <laughs> I said. What is Alpha Hour? Then she said, you haven't heard of this. You have to look at it. So, later on, I think I got an opportunity. When I saw the numbers, I said, are these tiger ants or human beings that are following the meat? 30,000, 40,000 people, 50,000 people. And they are all following an activity. So, I stayed on. I followed a bit. Then, the whole thing started. But you know what, people? Um, the Bible said that where the carcass is, the eagles will gather. But you get into this place and the way you guys have gathered is amazing. But people, let me tell you. If you examine us here now, you're tiapo, you're modern. Catch your young say, or tiapo. You know, I'm saying this because sometimes when we gather like this, people think we are crazy. All these people that follow these men of God and follow all these churches. Meanwhile, it amazes me that when they see people in the stadium, they don't say that. When they see them like that in the market, they don't say that. But when they see them in the church, they think there's something wrong with us. But you know what, people? There's nothing wrong with us. Yet you are proper. And, and, and for me, when I see that kind of movement, and I see somebody who's far younger than me, and the person is championing this kind of movement, I make myself younger by joining them. I mean, that is now that is listen that that is the secret of remaining young where you see young people join them join them it's very important so for me you see I have a tendency of making him older and he has the tendency of making me younger. So I think I benefit from this relationship more than him. Because who wants to be older? Yeah. Who wants to be older? So the more you, you associate with the young people, the more you gather the energy. No, the more you gather the energy, the strength, the power. When you see young people and they are moving, they are preaching, they are vibrant. It, it also keeps you young. The last time, oh, you may be seated. The last time I was in the plane um, about um, a few, I think, last week, I saw some of my friends. I couldn't recognize them. People I knew and I've been seeing them for about 15 years. They're about 15 years, 10 years. I saw them on the plane. I couldn't recognize them because they have grown older. Like me. I couldn't recognize them. So some people who were on the some people who had some of their relatives on the plane with me, one of them sent me a text and said, um, there's this person on the plane. And so, so now, then I started, okay, 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 let me look for them. And I went to some of them and said hello. But you know what? I couldn't have recognized them. Because we are growing older, we are changing. And then God is doing this movement. And the anointing is increasing and God is shifting gears. And, and the power of God is moving. There's a whole revival 
And I came to tell you, Uti Apopa. Uti Apopa. Now, see, she, she, I said, I'm going to make a trip. I'm going to bring it to you. You see, the unbelievers have a way of programming our mind. So that when you see yourself like this, they try to convince you that there's something wrong with you. I remember when we started our ministry in Boga, they used to call us the frustrated people's church. And they succeeded in programming us to think we were frustrated. Then when they saw that God started blessing us, they gave us another nickname. Fashion Gate Chapel. And that's because the same people who said we were frustrated now said, if you don't dress well, you cannot go to this church. So they now call us fashion gay. Our members were getting worried about that word, fashion gate. So some of them came and told me, they said, Daddy, you know the nickname they've given us in town? They said, we are fashion gate. I said, it's true. <laughs> so I went to the church and I began to preach over some weeks or months. When I'm preaching, then I intentionally bring it in. And you know I can preach with anything. And no, I can preach with anything. I can, I can find my topic in any verse. I can preach it in the beginning. I can preach it. One day I preached a sermon in action, and the title was If I F. <laughs> if. So I can I can preach with anything. So one day I started dealing with something, and then I veered into fashion gate. And I said, This church is really the fashion gate of the Upper East region. I told them, I said, when it comes to architecture, we bring the best architecture here. Dressing, we bring the best dressing. English language, we bring the best English. I said, and when it comes to the fashion of God, we bring God to the region. So you know what? We are the fashion gate because without us, nothing good enters the region. Then, our members started understanding the fashion gate. And when the, men, the people in town saw that we owned the fashion gate and we were proud about it, they changed. <laughs> you see, the only way an insult becomes an insult is your reaction to the insult. Yeah. That is why Aki and Popo, they don't see it as an insult. No, I'm telling you, if you are Aki and Popo, people use it to insult you. Then they said, I won't wait for you to insult me. I will act movie with it. And now, they've acted so much with their height that even those of us, when we are tall, sometimes we are walking like this. We want to become Aki and Popo. They've made being short fashionable. Another person is somewhere crying. They said, I'm a short man. They said, I'm a short man. Is that lady I'm seeing? God bless you. So the Lord bless you all, and we want to thank Pastor for inviting us to be here. We, for us, it's, it's, such a, it's such an honor. It's such an honor. To, to be honest with you, what he's doing here, he doesn't need a guest speaker. The man doesn't need a guest speaker. He doesn't need anybody here to come and speak. I mean, he, he doesn't need anybody to come and preach. And tonight, I came um, accompanied by my old, old friend and brother, the Reverend Clement Ancheva is here. Amen. The, the past chairman of the Fountain Gate Chapel, and of course, like he told you, Mama Rosemont is here, and we came with, with our team. And, and I came with so many people, I can't mention all their names. But today, I want to preach a message. Several years ago, I wrote a book called Encounter with Jesus Christ. This one. Just so that when you close and you are looking for any of my books, you know which one to find. This one is um, Encounter with Jesus Christ, Zacchaeus. And I want to caution you, they are the last copies of this book left on earth. That means, apart from the ones that have come to the Grace Mountain, if these books finish from this desk today, that is the last place to be sold. And we didn't bring many of them. So I want to caution you that they are the last. Another book which are the last copies 
on earth to be sold is this one Jesus Christ and an open heaven and I'll be speaking on the open heaven tomorrow so when you go there and see these two books they are the last ones on earth and they are not many um, I don't know the quantity of them of head but I can tell you they are less than 50 each so don't wait and then I have these other books there I don't want to spend all my time going into books but the Lord mightily bless you go find the book and read and today out of this book the what is the name the encounter with Jesus Christ Zacchaeus I, I have carved a topic prophetically to speak to you tonight and the topic is this let the kings stand up let the kings stand up let the kings stand up now you'll be wondering what has kings got to do with Zacchaeus I want you to turn your Bible with me to Luke chapter 19 and I'm reading from the verse number 1 Luke 19 from verse 1 that Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Let's keep going. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and he could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before, climbed up into the sycamore tree, to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him, and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at your house. And he made haste and came down, and he received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they murmured, they all murmured, saying that he was going to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood up and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore fourfold. Stop right there. Zacchaeus stood up and said, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. This is where I took my topic. Let the kings stand up. Zacchaeus stood up and said. Now, I would not want to bore you, but I think you may never get a book to read on Zacchaeus as detailed as this one. This whole book is on those 10 verses of scripture. I'm writing about a man whose conversion is the most detailed conversion when Jesus preached on earth. In fact, his conversion is more detailed than Peter, John, James, all of them. Detailed. And when I look at the detailed manner in which this man was converted, the detailed manner in which he got his encounter with Jesus, my conclusion is that this man is likely he lingered on in the scriptures for some time and did not just disappear. I believe he went on to become a monumental figure in the kingdom of God and among the disciples of Jesus. And my, my thoughts are not just imaginations. I have a little bit of history to back the thing I was saying. That there was a man in the days of old called Clement of Alexandria, one of the early church fathers. Clement of Alexandria, we have it in church tradition that Clement of Alexandria believed that this same Zacchaeus was the matri who took the place of Judas Iscariot after he had betrayed Jesus and he had killed himself. So we talk about Matthias who came in and then replaced, um, what is the name? Replaced Judas Iscariot. And Clement of Alexandria believed that this man was, um, was the same Zacchaeus we are talking about. Then there are some old writings called the Apostolic Constitutions. The Apostolic Constitutions record that the first bishop of the church in Caesarea was, the, was um, one Zacchaeus the publican. So he attributes bishopric 
to Zacchaeus, the publican. And we believe that it is this same man called Zacchaeus in the Bible. Now, the story about Zacchaeus, and I can't go into the whole thing tonight. When you read the story of Zacchaeus, the day he stood up, when you look at his attitude, the way he ran, the way he met Jesus, the way he came into Jesus, Jesus came into his house and everything. We see three officers in the lives of Zacchaeus. Three officers which the body of Christ must occupy. I agree that we must all be in the fivefold ministry. The, the prophet, the apostle, the teacher, the pastor, the evangelist. The fivefold ministry is there. But every believer, not only the fivefold ministry, every believer must stand in three offices before the Lord returns. Three offices will be restored to the church. And these three offices are three ministry offices where we are going to stand in these offices and minister to the rest of the world. The offices are the office of the priest, the office of the prophet, and the office of the king. And that day Zacchaeus stood, all the three offices were manifested. There is a revelation in Zacchaeus. So the man stands and he says, we see him running, climbing up into a tree. Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. All those things were the signs of a prophet. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was. It was a prophetic ministry. The man operated from an elevated height or level. Then the man was a priest. This is the man who is saying that anything I've taken from anybody by false accusation, I restore unto them fourfold. And that act of restoration, restitution, is the work of a priest. Because you know what? Before he restores to you, he must absorb you from wrongdoing. Your, your, they must say you didn't do really do wrong. And then they restore unto you what they took from you. And that is the work of a priest. But today, I'm interested in how he stood up as a king. And I want to tell somebody who is still sitting as a servant, as a pauper, as a beggar, that you must stand as a king. And today, in the name of Jesus, I'm preaching to you two things in two nights. Number one is, you must stand as a king. And tomorrow night, the heaven will open. And the anointing of a king will come upon your life. You must stand as a king. Live like a king. Think like a king and act like a king. The church of Jesus Christ, we are behaving like beggars on earth. No authority, no power, no influence. But I see us acting as kings. I feel like saying many things at the same time. But let me just scatter them everywhere. A time is coming. Any major hospital you see must belong to us. Any major school you see must belong to us. No, 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 people. I see some of you in road construction. And, and watch this. You are not making contract. You are not built, you are not, you are not, how do I call it? You are not constructing roads to collect money. You are making roads to donate to communities. <laughs> no, today, today when we're coming here, at a certain point, the driver entered a pothole, my waist nearly broke. I see a time is coming. You tie the road, you call it Alpha Road. <laughs> Yesterday, yesterday, mommy was mommy was reading some things for me about living faith. Bishop Edegbo's church. She was just reading it to me. I said, Mama, talk to me. She said, since 2015. 2015, that about. She said, there has never been power failure in Canaan land. She said they are beginning. She said, Bishop, what is the name? Pastor Papa at the Boyer's Church. They are, or is it Canaan land, the same Canaan land? They are beginning to discover how to convert human waste product into electrical power. No. Nigeria, the church knows how to dwell like kings. Today, I command. Let the king stand up. What is this? Stop climbing trees and stand up. Zacchaeus climbed up into a tree. But by 
the time he met Jesus, he himself stood up. Stand up. Stop lying down like a beggar. Your church cannot be in a classroom. It's not possible because kings are not found in a classroom. We have worshipped in a classroom before. But there is a time to be in a classroom. And there is a time to occupy acres of land. May the king rise up. I see you in your family. You rise up. Now, Sit down, sit down, because we are now trying to start. The Bible said in the book of Revelation, chapter 5 and the verse number 10. Revelation 5, 10. Revelation 5, 10. That God has made us unto our God. Uh -uh. Kings and priests. I don't think you understand this scripture. No, 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 you don't. He didn't say he has made unto people. He has not made us unto people. He has made us unto God. He has made us unto our God. So we are kings, not only in the sight of men, but in the sight of God. That means, even God, when he looks at us, he's not looking at puppets and beggars. He's looking at kings and priests and prophets and princes and princesses come on shout i'm a king stand up stand up and say i'm a king i'm a king and you see this is the place where when we start acting as kings they say these pastors are very proud of us. these christians are arrogant they think they are the only people who know god not we think we know. We know. He has made us unto our God. Kings and priests. And we shall reign on earth. You know, our religious mind tells us we are priests. As of when I say we are priests, you can just say, oh, amen. Because you know, what do priests do? They wear one long dress, white. And then they go into the temple and then they make a sacrifice and then when they finish they say eh, in the name of the father son and the holy ghost <laughs> so that's a priest so you like that one then you can ride the donkey here and there and then you know as a priest you give communion and as a priest you you, you wear charlie water and you wear jesus sandals <laughs> so it's very easy to accept that you are a priest but to accept that you are a king is where the challenge to accept that you are a prophet is also easy. That is why, because I have one day, just one day to uh, 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 one day to address Zacchaeus. I didn't talk about the priest and the prophet, though they are in the book. I just chose the king because prophetically, the Lord told me, "I am sending you with the oil." to anoint kings I'm sending you to the oil to anoint kings today I'm going to be speaking about the power and the anointing on your head and tomorrow when I talk about the open heaven I will talk about the atmosphere over your head because you know Oh, let me let me tell you this a little bit. Let me tell you. There are many people who are anointed, but the atmosphere over their head is the wrong atmosphere. It's not a matter of being anointed. Your anointing must operate under some climate. And that climate is called open heaven. I want to talk about the king he has made us unto our gods our god priest and kings now we are told that and Zacchaeus stood up let's go back to Zacchaeus Zacchaeus 19.8 Zacchaeus 19.8 and Zacchaeus stood come on mention your name three times and shout stood 
So Eastwood stood. Eastwood stood. Eastwood stood. Everybody in your family is sitting stand. Everybody in your region is sitting stand. Everybody in your family is sitting stand. What do the guys say? Edomoshi, or what do they say? Edomoshi, Tomomini. What do they call King? Inga. Manja. Manja. Manja, Jibo. You are not a servant. We beg too much. Sometimes you should give instructions. You know why this man of God is operating like this? When you listen to him on the internet, you don't hear a beggar. The man is a whole king sitting there. The, the man is a king on the airways. You, you see a young man with audacity, authenticity, and authority. Somebody say audacity. Say authenticity. And say authority. These are the three marks of a king. The three marks or signs of a king. Audacity, authenticity, authority. Oh, Jesus. Sit down, let me talk to you a bit. Zacchaeus stood. Let's go back to Zacchaeus. The man stood. Zacchaeus stood. He stood. Oh, I'm on Luke chapter 19 verse 8. And Zacchaeus stood up. I'm still waiting. Luke 19 verse 8. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my goods I give to the poor. L let me start to the poor. Let me start from the poor. Every king, when you open the brain of a king, the first thing you will see in the brain of a king is the poor. The poor. The poor. If you open the brain of a king, the first thing you see is the poor. His outside, he looks like a king. On the outside, he's dressed in shiny clothing. On the outside, he's wearing the crown of a king, which probably is made of gold or silver. But when you crack his brain open, what you see is the poor. The thing that confirms Zacchaeus as a king is the man's thoughts about the poor. As soon as he stood up, he said, I stand on the behalf of the poor. I stand for the cause of the poor. I pray, may God raise you up. And you know why I know God wants to make many of us kings? Because there are too many poor people around you. Poor people in your family, poor people in your region, poor people in your country, poor people in your nation. I declare, you are standing up as a king. You are standing up for the poor. You are standing up for the needy. You are standing up for the homeless. You are standing up for those that have no clothing. You are standing up for those that have no accommodation. Come on, say, I stand for the poor. Listen. And that is why any politician who wins to, wants to win an election must include the poor in the agenda. Otherwise, you will not get the vote. And the poor, incidentally, are the majority. The poor. And Jesus himself, who is the king of kings, when he came into the world, he said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. This is the king of kings, lord of lords, king of glory, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. He walks in the world and look at what he said. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Poor. 
So immediately, the poor are in his agenda. He has sent me to, to, to heal the broken hearted and the broken hearted are poor. To preach deliverance to the captives and the captives are poor. And recovering of the sight to the blind and the blind are poor. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord or the jubilee of Jehovah and the people that are excited when the jubilee of Jehovah comes are the poor that have been held in captivity for 49 years and they are waiting for the 50th year jubilee shofar to come out of bondage. Somebody say the poor. One day somebody asked me a question. He said, brothers, you what? what? How, 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 do I get, how do I get the kind of anointing you carry? I said, make the poor your agenda. God will anoint anybody who thinks about the poor. Why? The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach. What you preach is not as important as to whom you preach it. Many of us have taken the gospel away from the poor and given it to the rich. So even when God sends us, he sends us to where the rich are. Have you come to this church before? When you are coming here, do you see the road? The area? When we're coming, I said, no wonder this man is so powerful. The rough road, the community, the houses around you. The man is sent with the gospel to the poor. But you know what? Out of the poor, he will bring about an anointing where Jehovah will raise up the poor from the dust and pick up the beggar from the dunghill and make them sit among princes and kings. I declare to somebody right now, God brought you out of nothing and he made you a king. Come and clap your hands and praise Jehovah. Now, sit down. Let me tell you something. Sit down. Let me tell you something. Today, one of my daughters ran to me with bad news. She said, Daddy, ja, 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 Daddy, come and sit down. That's the way she, she handles me. She just pulled my hand like that. Daddy, 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 come and sit down, sit down. So she commanded me as a daughter. Some of my children are like that. Some of them, when they meet you, they oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They meet you, I say, Amen. Some they hold my hand, pull me, they say, sit down. So I sat down. She said, Daddy, ja, 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 ja. And then they knew, Daddy, ya, 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 ya. I said, there. Then she told me a story. She said she went to a church. And they gave her a prophecy she doesn't like. She said, look, this prophecy shook her. And the whole day she couldn't sleep. Daddy, ja, 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 ja. Then she took, <laughs> she took something, showed me. She said, Do you know this pastor? I said, I know him. She said, Yeah. Oh, she had been combi. Daddy, ja, ja, ja. The whole day went to me and I said, Oh, okay, I know him. So I called somebody and I said, They should call the, they should tell the prophet to call. Now, but before I told her, I want to talk to the prophet. I told her, I said, Mommy, Uni Madibi, anything that happens around your life which looks like it's rubbish, look inside well. There may be something good in that thing. <laughs> I told her, I said, you know what? Maybe you don't like what happened, but I'm going to look inside and see whether there's something good in that thing. So I told her, I said, you see me? I grew up from the baller. At a certain point, for three or four years, my father was not taking care of me. Because he didn't have. The man is in the village. He's very poor. And we were with our mother in the town of Bogatanga. And my mother didn't have enough. So I used to go from baller to baller. And I was very good on the baller. Look, my eyes were anointed to see any sellable thing on the baller. I went to the baller with my magnet. Magnet. When I see a piece of metal and attach it to the mag magnet and it, at it attracts it, I know this is not pure aluminum. So the people will not buy when it doesn't attract. 
and I used to call it not aluminum, alumi. So I tell my friends, Ga aluminanga kudochi. This is alumi. Pick it up. Alumi kega. Then when I see something that is bronze, brass, and is iron mixed with copper, when I attack, when I put the magnet, that one too, it will attract it. But if it's pure copper, it will not. So when I catch that one too, and it's not attracting, then I say, ga copper. So we're working the catching copper. Aluminium. So you see the baller smelling goat, smelling foul, Vultures have died on the army. Ch children have gone to defecate. I jump over. <laughs> Alumi. Copper. Alumi. Copper. I gather. Go and sell. Then I get food to eat. And then you can go to some of the ballers and they've thrown sardine, mackerel. They've thrown them away. Oh. Then I pick them. Expiry date. If this is December, they said the thing expired in June. So what do I do? I backdate. <laughs> I tell myself, you know what? This is not December, this is June. I call those things. We be not as though they were. I, I'm not saying when it expired food. Because in those days, our stomachs were different from this. Your dad about stomach you carry. <laughs> We, our stomachs were nika nika. <laughs> All the things we ate and we are still standing here. If you eat, look, in our day, we didn't know food poisoning. We ourselves were poisoned. Maya God Listen, there are mysteries in life. Oh. Hey. There are times when you become a danger to danger. There is a scripture I wish to give you, but I, I, I hope it's not wrong when I quote it. Hosea chapter 13 verse 14. Hosea 13 14. If there's something like that. If there's nothing like that, forget it. <laughs> so for I will ransom them from the grave and I will redeem them from death. All death, I will be your plague. All grave, I will be your distraction. So God is saying, grave, I am your distraction. He said, death, I am your plague. So God can become a plague and God can become distraction. So in our case, when we saw poison, we became poison. But I knew how to pick the good out of the body. I knew how to. So I told her, I said, there might be something good in that thing. Let me call the man. So the pastor called and I said, okay, my daughter is telling me this and this and this. And immediately, we sorted the issue out. She was not very happy. Daddy, I'm not happy. Ah, it's good I came here. But you see, the reason I'm telling you this is this. What is that? <laughs> the reason I'm telling you this is that this man of God gathers people. And you have no idea. Sometimes we can sit in the church and we look like we are born. Unbelievers look at us. They are laughing at us. They don't know what is happening. But God is picking kings from the border. God is picking kings. I'm talking to MPs today. I'm talking to vice presidents today. I am talking to presidents today. I am talking to CEOs today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, shout at them and praise the name. Down, let's go. Zacchaeus, the man stood, and when he stood, the first thing he's talking about is the poor. That is what makes me convinced that the man is a king. Daniel 4 17. Daniel is speaking to the book of Nazar. Daniel 4 27. I beg your pardon. Daniel 4 27. Daniel is talking to King Nebuchadnezzar. He said, King Nebu. Wherefore, O oh, King Nebu, let my counsel be acceptable unto you and break up your sins by righteousness and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be 
a lengthening of your tranquility. If you, you want your tranquility to be lengthened, have mercy on the poor. We read Proverbs 29, verse 14. Let's go back and pick it. Proverbs 29, verse 14. The king that faithfully judges the poor, his throne shall be established forever. When you are a king and you faithfully judge the poor, your throne shall be forever. Listen, if you want to live forever, if you want to be blessed forever, you want to be successful forever, attach yourself to the poor man. <laughs> Even the wicked rich man on earth who only saw Lazarus sitting down and begging and dogs licking the food. When he even went to hell, he still saw Lazarus. <laughs> Anybody who forgets about who forgets the poor, entering even the kingdom of God will be difficult for you. Because even Jesus, when he came, he associated himself with the poor. Our greatest trouble in world in the world is the distance between us and the poor. When you stop associating with the poor, all the principles of humility disappear from your life. The poor help you to be humble. I pray in the name of Jesus. May you stand for the poor. Stop hiding from your brothers and your sisters who are poor. Pastors, stop hiding from the poor in your church and associating with only the rich. Church members, stop hiding from other poor people in the church. You know, you are poor in the church. You have not got some nice force, designer force. The, the, you have gone for force Gucci. And when you come to the church, you are running away from other people who are poor. But you yourself know that what you are wearing, I dear your force. The poor. Somebody shout the poor. Relate to the poor. King David came on the throne. 2 Kings 9. As soon as King David hit the throne, look at what he did. As soon as he hit the throne. 2 Samuel 9. I beg your pardon. 2 Samuel 9. As soon as he hit the throne. Is there, is there any that is left of the... Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show them kindness? for Jonathan's sake. And then somebody came and said, Jonathan has a son called Mephibosheth. And the man is crippled in both feet. He said, go and bring him. When they brought him, he said, Mephi, from today, you will eat food on my table. The man is eating with a poor man. A cripple. Some of you, when you see the poor, you run away. He said, I'll eat with him. That is a key. So you know what he said. He rose up, he began to talk. So Zacchaeus rose up. He started talking about the poor. Now, let me tell you, I have talked to you about the heart of the king. Let me now talk about the hand of the king. Oh, the hand of the king is not broke. The hand of the king is not... Listen, the unbelievers are wishing we will be poor, but you can never be poor. Because of the poor, you cannot be poor. Because if you are added to the poor, how can you help the poor? Today, listen, you are removed from poverty so that you can help the poor. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. If somebody's in a pit, if somebody's in a pit, and you go and fall into the pit with them, can you bring them out? You must stay out to bring them out. I see you out of poverty. To bring out the poor. Come on, say, I am staying out of poverty to bring out the poor. I am staying out of poverty to bring out the poor. I am staying out of poverty to bring out the poor in the name of Jesus. Come on, shout yes. Yeah. The Bible said concerning Zacchaeus, and he said, and Zacchaeus was a rich man. Can I define you today? You are a rich man. Lift up your hand and begin to shout, I am a rich man. I am a rich woman. I am a rich man. I am a rich woman. Now listen. When you see a king, it means the person is not poor. He has made us 
kings and the priest. That means that God is establishing even in the book of Revelation that poverty is not your portion. Yeah, these pastors are always preaching prosperity. Listen, I'm not always preaching prosperity. I live in Bogatanga. I don't live in Accra. If I wanted to be preaching and teaching prosperity out of stupidity, I will not live in Bogatanga. But when I'm preaching prosperity and I'm saying you are king and you are rich, you are rich, I'm coming from one of the poorest regions and I came to tell you, God did not ordain you to be broke and to be poor. Receive that anointing now and tell your financial abundance in the name. Oh, listen. Today, a man came and sat in front of me. A man sat in front of me. You know, before I traveled, before I traveled, the man came to me before I went to Europe three weeks ago. And I asked him, I said, how is the economy treating you? Because by the time I was going, the dollar was playing Dangbeishi. <laughs> hey, cooler. <laughs> then the dollar was cooler, the, the CD, everything, the Dangbeishi. So the man came and sat in front of me and I asked him, my brother, how is the economy treating you? He said, which economy? I said the way the city is falling, he said the city is falling, but he's not falling. I said, I said, I said, uh, have you not heard what is going on? He said, my brother, the way I do my business, things like this don't affect me. I said, uh huh? He said, I was already doing my business in dollars. So when city is falling, I'm in the dollar world. So today he came. And when he came today, I said, now I will corner this man. Because as for now, what is going on is affecting everybody. I said, so my brother, the bond. He said, oh, advantage. I said, huh? So you mean the confusion with the bond? He said, Reverend, my brother, some things affect other people negatively, others it affects them positively. He said, this is another advantage for me. I said, what kind of human being is this? See this falling. A thousand fell on his side. Bond. Ten thousand on his right hand. It did not come nigh him. I pray. The last time I checked, your surname is not economy. Your surname is not economy. Your surname is not economy. Come on, say my surname is not economy. Your surname is not economy. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The man is sitting there. I watch his shoe. I watch his jacket. Relaxed. Finally, when he got up to go, he said, my brother. Oh, and you know the, rich, the way rich people talk. He said, my brother. I, I, when you come back, I'll see you. Eh? And you know, there are many times of seeing. There are some people, when they see you, they have seen you. <laughs> Others too, when they see you. Listen, the man sat like a king. I told him, how is your family? He said, that family. He said, I have covered everybody in the family. I said, how? He said, you know, my father had three wives and many children. I went to the village and I did self-contained for everybody. Everybody self-contained. Everybody self-contained. For all the children of three wives. You, only your, your father, only one wife. The children, you are only three and a half. Look at the way you are struggling. Turn to somebody and say, settle your brothers and your sisters. Settle them, settle, settle them. Settle them, settle them. Settle them. Oh, come on, clap your hands and scream like I'm talking to you. Ah. So, Zacchaeus, the man stood up. He, he talked like a king. His heart, he cast.
carry the poor by the hands. He said, oh, where is it? Luke 19, 8. He stood. You see, sometimes you read the Bible, you don't understand it. He stood. Oh, why is he keeping long? 19, 8. Half of my goods. When you think about the poor, but you don't have goods, you will get hypertension. <laughs> you have a good heart, but you don't have goods. to die early is to be a man with a good heart but poor hands people's problems will kill you oh today I was I was going to take the lift at the place where I stay and I saw a man who is a driver and I asked him are you married he said, yeah. somehow how can marriage be somehow you are either married or not he said me and the woman we stay together we have two children but the dowry, you see, I went and then I didn't finish. So I have to finish. So I came, I called my daughter Daphne. I said, Daphne, find out from him how much of the dowry is left. I want to help him to finish the dowry. I want to pay the rest of the dowry for the man to have a clean conscience. To live with his wife and two children. Otherwise, these children almost in say, oh. So can you imagine if I couldn't handle the dowry? I have to hold this hand and say, shall we pray? The earth is the loss and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas. And established it upon the Poverty will make you stammer in prayer. <laughs> For he has honored you upon the... <laughs> the way you are making it, I think you've been a stammerer before. <laughs> For he has... <laughs> founded upon the... check the scriptures the people who were using those words to the half of something half of something half of something check the bible to the half of this to the half of this to the half of this when you check the scriptures all the people that were talking to the half of something to the half of something to the half of something they were all kings king ahasuerus esther chapter 5 verse number 2 and 3 Esther came into the presence of the king and the Bible said it was so when the king saw Esther, the queen, standing in the court that she obtained favor in his sight and the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. And the king said unto her, What will you? What will thou, Queen Esther? What is your request? It shall be given unto you to the half of my kingdom. When so when Zacchaeus said, half of my goods, he's saying half of my kingdom, half of my house, half of what I own, half of my businesses, half of my kingdom. May you have the capacity to speak like a king. What do you want? Listen, don't say I have blasphemed. 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 I am about to say something, but don't say I have blasphemed. Graduate from I am praying with you. 
to come and get it tomorrow. Amen. Graduate from, I am praying with you. Put your hand in your pocket and say what you wanted. Here is the check. Come and clap your hands and scream it and praise you. has this wealth needs and you have this wealth goods and you tell them be warm the love of God is not in you the trouble is that most of our people it is not that they have this wealth goods and they won't give it to you they don't have it from today your status has changed your level has changed can I hear you shout it and praise the name of God Listen, can we graduate from I'm praying with you? I'm praying with you. Oh, my brother. My mother is dead. I've lost my mother. She kaba yokoboshiya. She paparushiya. When I do in the funeral, we don't know, we are still planning. We are trying to gather from here and there. I'm with you in prayer. Hopeless man. Hopeless woman. I can tell you the majority of you now in this room, if you need real financial help today, you are likely to ask an unbeliever instead of a believer. If you are looking for employment, you are likely to go to an unbeliever instead of a... I can tell you, many of you here, if you are looking for employment, you are likely to go to a Muslim instead of a church elder. Because church elders, you know, here in NAD, I saw them. And I saw for the day, oh, here no. And you're so fit out that we need to figure out who. Am I talking to you? Receive the anointing of a king. Receive the anointing of a king. We inject into you today the potential of a king. Authority, authenticity, audacity. Come and clap your hands and praise God. I give you to the half of my kingdom. I see you. You are giving cars to people like water. Houses to people. In your lifetime, you will bless people with cars, lands, houses. Anybody that said an amen, something is happening to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. King Herod's wife, Herodias, their daughter, whose name is not given in the book of Mark, but the name is actually Salome. Salome, the daughter of Herodias, was dancing. And after she danced, book of Mark, chapter 6, and the verse number 22 to 24, she danced well, and the dancing pleased the king. And King Herod said unto Herodias, Ask your daughter, and when the daughter of the said Herodias, came in and danced and pleased Herod and them that were with him the king did not say give her a clap offering in our case we only clap look at the way some of you are clapping tonight <laughs> go and get a big land 100 acres move this church from here take them there May this clapping turn to ability. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm telling you people, the amount of clapping people clap for us when we preach well. If they had converted it to the offering, we would not be sitting here. <laughs> and sometimes the people who are the broke most, they are the ones who clap the loudest. One day, there used to be this guy in our church. Eh? When you are preaching, he won't sit down. 
he will put something in his hand. And I didn't know what it was. And he will come from the back. As if he's going to beat up people. He, he, they put it down. Then because he himself knew it was small, he will cover it with his hand and pray and shake. Others will put their offerings around his offering and they go back and I didn't know which one was his. So one day when he was coming, I said, Akwe, and ne. Just like Jesus saw that some people were casting in abundance and a woman threw in two pence. Me to today, I go spy, but I go, I go see the thing where this man, they take trouble us. This man came zealous, hit the pulpit, nearly, no, hit the altar, nearly broke it. When I checked, five Ghana. The following week I was preaching, I said, please, when you are coming with five Ghana, walk like five Ghana. Oh dear, Brawase, Nanandi Boko. Me the five Ghana, me the five Ghana, five Ghana. Now who the five Ghana about? 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 Now who the five Ghana and yet, the day you are bringing 500. And, and sometimes, when they, they dance around the offering bowl, those kind of people, when they get to the offering bowl, they don't go. They come as Jehovah, turn my life around. He turns my life around. Then they say, He makes a way where there is no way. Jehovah has the fire. Meanwhile, go and check. Two Ghana. And the two Ghana and the way we're seizing. Look, I'm not saying the two Ghana is not good. But if it's two Ghana, dance two Ghana dance. If it's five Ghana, dance five Ghana dance. Of course, that is just a joke. Don't take me too serious on that one. This is my for be as serious as them. Over you know, be I offended. They see me one guy and I grow my man cancer. Catch your own go say one cancer, one cancer. A wood if you are at the son, the man cancer. Man cancer, I grow no be D. Abba, yet I grow a strike a crana a day. Would you the piano with the serious open me? You see, this, this is what I don't like about these churches. Mm, this is what I don't like. Yeah, you know, he was preaching well, but this this one. Mm. OBS, look, if somebody sitting by you is not laughing, tickle them. Now, so let's look at Herod. Let's look at Herod. Mark chapter 6, verse 22, 24. Mark 6, 22, 24. And he swore unto her. Oh, Mark 6, 22. Okay, let's take the verse 23. No, no, no. Start from verse 22. And the king said unto her. He didn't clap. Ask me what whatsoever you will, and I will give you. Hey. say you. Ask me anything. What about if they say your car? No, some of you you dare not ask this question tonight. <laughs> Dana, you can't ask that question. You know what you will ask for. <laughs> you ask ask me what you, hey. you know like the day god told solomon solomon ask anything i know god doesn't make mistake but i'm praying for the day you ask me that okay on the opera or maybe something i'm going to tell him carry the whole of america and come and donate it to the upper east region I said, a 
Eradi uni ma America. Eradi Jehovah uni ma America. O si na se mi na mi bo America mi ni mo ba pesa uko swa America ni na uni mboriga tanga swa America ni na fa koshe bogem. So God doesn't ask me some questions. So listen, no, no, no. There are questions God doesn't ask me because He knows what He's dealing with. <laughs> questions, questions. I, I hear some men of God say, and I was with the Lord, and the Lord asked me this, and the Lord said, ask this. I said, when will He make mistake? <laughs> I know God doesn't make mistake, but when will He come? He said, what do you want? I said, God, me. Child. I want a first class hospital in Bogatanga. A hospital with a helipad on top there. Where helicopters can be landed. Lord, you know, Lord, I want, I want you to confuse a lot of the doctors in India. Very good doctors. They should come and stay in Bogatanga and work there. Lord, at university. Lord, you know, airport. Airport. Upper East Region. Lord. Lord mechanized agriculture happening oh god i think you may forget to bring a diary let me give you let me give you more he said where is the scripture ask whatsoever you will and i will give it to you and he swore unto her whatsoever you ask him i will give it unto you to the half of my kingdom if a poor man is speaking this one you are the will of god ask me anything by the will of god i can do all things through christ who strengthens me So whenever you hear to the half of, to the half of, you are talking about the king. So Zacchaeus gets up and says, to the half of my goods. Let me give you a last one. Jesus Christ fed people. He fed them. He fed them. And when he finished feeding all the poor, John chapter 6 verse 15, I want to close. He finished feeding the people. And when Jesus, therefore, after feeding the people, perceived that they would come and take him by force and make him a king, he departed again onto the mountain by himself. Now, so you know what? The man has done miracles. He has raised the dead. He has opened the eyes of the blind. He's done so many things. They never made him a king. When he fed the poor, they were planning to now come and seize him and make him a king by force. Listen to me. If you want to be made a king, feed the poor take care of the poor I pray I pray let me give you something let me give you something there was a preacher a lot of people criticize him in Nigeria they criticize him in Ghana everywhere some said he was of God others said he was not of God the man's name was T.B. Joshua TB Joshua. Some say he's a man of God, others say he was not. But the poor people did not have that debate. He gave them food, he gave them clothing. The ones we call the true men of God, he gave nobody food, gave nobody water, gave nobody drink. They said to Jesus, they said, This woman is a sinner. He said, you, you are not sinners, but since I came to your house, you didn't wash my feet with water. You didn't anoint my feet with oil. But this woman, since I came, minim. And you be beyond minim. Nema bebre minim. But say, what you so for? The poor must be part of your agenda. 
eye opening. This is the first time I'm preaching in your church. I can tell you prophetically. God is going to make you like a king. Man of God, I didn't preach this message for your congregation. I didn't want to tell you from the beginning. I didn't come to preach to your church. I came to prophesy to you. He said, Daniel chapter 4, verse 27. Keep this scripture all the days of your life. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto you. Break off your sins by righteousness. And you've been preaching a lot on righteousness. And your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. If it may be a lengthening of your tranquility. Paying attention to the poor will lengthen your life. We need a chair. Next time, I'll come and preach to your congregation. I didn't want to start saying it early for people to walk away. But I just brought you a message. That you will stand on your feet and the fate of the poor will be your concern. Because you have a good heart. Rejoice because of you. You will raise up kings among these simple people that are coming to you. Ah! Dakadobo Siyanama. Man of God, can I go another 30 minutes? Paros Timisa. Nikalabadoski. This is a university where kings will be raised. I didn't say a university where kings will come in. I said kings will be raised. There are some churches where kings come in and when they come in they displace the poor from the church but this one kings are not coming in kings will be raised right from our midst Ada God told Samuel he said Sammy I don't think God was calling prophet Samuel Samuel he just called him Sammy Sammy a horn of oil, you know why? And go among Jesse's children. I have provided a king from among the children of Jesse. Go and anoint. Thank you. Go and anoint. One of them to be a king. David. When I pour this oil on him, by extension, the oil will start traveling. Yeah. Oh! Today, mommy and I, mo me and an auditor were talking. The auditor who takes care of Doxa Court in Boga. And I said, Professor John Bowney, you are studying the account of the Doxa Court in Boga. Doxa Court is a hotel in Bogatanga, which mommy and I built. And since we built it, it's about two years now. I have never gone there for one CD. Mommy has never taken one CD out of it. Today I was talking to the auditor and I told him, I said, and the auditor is not some graduate accountant. He's a professor in accounting. 
Professor Joe Mauli. As a prof, you've looked in the account. He said, oh man, you've been saying it and I believe you. But I look in the account and you and mama, not even one city. I said, prof, we didn't build it for money. GRA would never believe us, but that is the fact. We are only happy to see that a young man who used to work on Bola before I get food to eat, we can build a hotel. Some get employment. When I go there and I see some are cleaning and they can feed their family, some are sitting at the reception, some are weeping. Then I say, Lord, in Timipana, this same land where I couldn't get food to eat, you can use us to create something that people can be applied. I said, Prof, I want to tell you, mommy and I don't want anything financial from that hotel. We are happy to see people's children are working. And we are happy to see that our guests have come from Accra. And we have a place for them to sleep. That is all we want. We don't want anything. We don't. I'm a pastor. Seriously, I don't need anything. I can tell you, I won't do business. No. I'll be a greedy man to do business. The other day I was going to Borga. This is my son. He came to me at the airport. He said, Daddy, you are blessed. Oh. And he blessed me. He gave me some money. It's more than enough. And what you gave me is more than enough. I will not be greedy enough to stop praying and studying the word of God and go and start doing business. Oh! Say, man, go go see hotel, pass them, go pay I'm greedy. No! I'm just happy to see I've provided employment. Listen, you should see my joy when we are building all those buildings for Fountain Gate Chapel, Desert Passiers EAM. And I see people are carrying concrete, some are mixing the concrete, some are plastering, some are painting. When I go to the place, I say, Hey, Irade, me pana minima, minama, where you sue me? I'm a encro for a timity on my school fees. Oh, my baby, da, and you can eat this. So I was telling the professor, I said, You cannot break your head for people to see what is in it. But I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, in this world, there are still selfless people. All the people are not like you. But sometimes we are so evil, we think everybody is like us. Yeah. Yeah. And as of we, we now they've opened all these churches because of money. Who may say, Come and me, come and me, say, Oh boy, Kotumpo. I somehow can look at you. You have only drawn conclusion because you've taken your brain and, and the wickedness in your mind and you have superimposed it on the minds of other people. But the truth is that they are not like you. Yeah. They are not like you. Man of God, one day, I'll come and preach to your people. But today from minute one up till now, I came to tell you you have stood like a king. Uh, take it in the name of Jesus the anointing of a king the anointing of kings ah let it go pick it up ah let it go the anointing of a king Anybody, I put this oil on. The king's anointing is on you. Take it. Uh, Jesus. Uh, Jesus. Uh, come on. Put it in that bottle for me. Jesus. Uh, uh, Of kings. Receive it. 
Somebody take this pulpit and put it up here for me. Jesus. The destiny of the poor is in your hands. Those of you in the overflow, outside, everywhere, everywhere. If the message is for the man of God, the message can apply to you. Lift up your hand in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray for the anointing of a king. Let the anointing of a king come upon you. The power of God is outside. The power of God is everywhere. The anointing of God is everywhere. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Come on, take it.
Everybody quiet. Everybody quiet. There's no way I can practically go through this crowd with this oil. I don't have too much space here. But the Lord showed me something. He said, take the oil in your hand as a sign. And he said, he, Jesus himself, will walk among the people, inside and outside. But you know what he's telling me? He said, even if I showed you a king tonight, like Samuel, you would doubt. He said, some of the kings here tonight, they don't look like kings. You see this man? You see this man? He's the CEO of a very big company. When he was with me in Bogatanga, if somebody had told me, this is what you will be in Accra, I would say no. I remember, I used to come here and when I'm preaching, I'll put a little money in an envelope and say, Pastor McGruby, here is a blessing. Today, if I give him that blessing, he may give me a slap. God had him as a king. My eyes couldn't see it. Jesus is telling me tonight, if you see the kings in this building, and outside, you will not even recognize them. So he said, tonight I myself, the Messiah, will put oil. Let me tell you this, man of God, some of your people will give you testimony later. They will tell you, a man in shining clothing stood in front of them and anointed them. That man in the shining clothing is Jesus. Also for Emmanuel Samba. He's appearing in some people's houses online. Throughout the world, globally, Jesus Christ is anointing people. That same resurrected Lord who appeared on the earth. Look at this lady. Look at this lady. She's seeing something. She's seeing something. She's seeing something. Somebody bring her to me. She's seeing something. That lady is seeing something. That lady is seeing something. Bring her to me. Bring her to me. She's seeing something. Jesus is going to appear to some people. You will see a man. His eyes are like fire. He's anointing some people. They are seeing something. Lift up your hand. Close your eyes. Keep quiet if you can. Keep quiet if you can. Keep quiet if you can. One minute. One minute. And this place will catch fire. Because oil will pour on somebody's head. Come on, lift up your hand. But keep quiet if you can. Keep quiet if you can. Dear Jesus, I ask tonight, it's a night for the anointing of kings. Some of them into politics, some of them into education, some of them into health, some of them into business, some of them into the ministry, some of them into family life. I pray right now, is that the lady they brought me from upstairs? Oh, Jesus. Take it, wherever you are. I'm done with her. Let her go. Take it. Come on. Lift up your hand. Ushers, do me a favor. Go outside the building. God is anointing some people outside. God is anointing some people inside. In the next few minutes, I see not less than 500 people anointed with the oil of kings. 500 people lift up your hands you are one of them something is happening to you come on take it right now receive it right now come on take it right now take it right now receive it right now and ushers if you see anybody under the power bring them to me let me put this oil on their head bring them here now now oil to my right Oh, take it. Bring them to me if you can. Go this way. Ah, take it. 
now something is happening to you. Receive it. Oil, 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 oil. Somebody is becoming a king. Somebody is becoming a king. Receive it now. The oil is on your head. Somebody start praying in the spirit. Outside the building. Inside. Online. Everywhere. In the name of Jesus. The power of God. Come on. Take it. Bring them to me quickly. I have 10 minutes. To get out of this window. 10 minutes. Lift up your hands. Everybody. Begin to pray. Father, the anointing of a king is upon me. Let me hear the kind of prayer you pray at the alpha hour. Let me hear the alpha hour kind of prayer. Pray. Touch the organ. Pray. Yeshua Amashia. Yeshua Yeah.
your right hand and speak to Jesus. I believe that kings have been raised. I believe that kings have been raised. Begin to declare that you are a king. And declare that you are standing up as a king. But sit down. Sit down. Sit down. You know what? These are the times when people must hear from God more than ever before. I told you a businessman sat in front of me and when I asked him, what is the effect of all these things that are happening on your business? He said nothing. He said things are even becoming better for you. I took this envelope. I illustrated a point. And I put the empty envelope back in. I want to give it to somebody. I will not tell you what to do. But put a seed in it. And come and put it on the altar. No. It's just one. Somebody give me many envelopes. I will not tell you what to do. But take this and sow a seed. The most dangerous time is when the preachers are telling you nothing. Opening is good to see. Thank you. Now, don't rush me. Stay in a line. Stay in a line. The most dangerous time is when the also at the same. The most dangerous time. It's when no preacher is telling you nothing. This man with the suspenders, so good seed, because people wear suspenders, they are not prepared. Who wore suspenders, not prepared yet. Can I have some envelopes? Is it possible? I will not tell you what to do. But go and do it. must get fed up with telling people what to do. It's between you and God. It's between you and God. Because sometimes when you tell people what to do, even if what somebody has to do is to Ghana it is the person who will do it. But maybe that is what God is telling somebody to do. Man of God, can you imagine that somebody sitting, they still call you today. She hasn't called you. Tell her that she's not supposed to sit on people's blessings overnight. You have a blessing with her. But tell her she should stop enjoying her family and remember people whose blessings are with her. Because the Bible said, if the poor man's coat remains with you overnight, I will not complete the sentence. Because you never know, know the emergency why you are supposed to send the money to them. I have many slow people around me. They are very slow. They move like tortoise. One day I went into a big man's office to pray for the office. When I went there, I saw plenty tortoises. What is plural of tortoises? Tortoises. Any of it? It's tortoises. Eh? Any of it? Plural of tortoises is tortoise. I saw plenty lying on the floor. <laughs> And the Lord told me, he said, everything in this man's office is slow, slow like a tortoise. A tortoise. I want you to put the anointing of a king. You saw, king said to the half of my kingdom, <laughs> to the half of my kingdom, come again, two. King said to the half of my kingdom, can you imagine if half of everything you have in this world, you put it in this envelope? Ha! 
I'm sure somebody decided, decided this one have it here. Can you imagine everybody in this building? Whatever you have, you take half. They took half and they promised a useless dancer half. But you know what she asked for that day? The head of John the Baptist. A man of God, these are the wicked human beings we have in the world. They prefer somebody dying to their personal prosperity. Yes, see, be what you want. But see, person will be more. Father, bless these envelopes. Touch our lives. In the name of Jesus. Men of God, give some to them. Give it to them. I held them before I gave it to them. So pick it from them. Pick it from them. Do it tonight. Some of you, if you know that that seed is a meaningful one and you want to do it by tomorrow, do it by tomorrow. But today, this is your offering. You are saying, Lord, I'm a king. So that it doesn't reduce you from a king to a garden boy in the king's palace. Ah, she ya we mo. As some people still come. Father, touch our lives. Some of you are outside in the overflow. Some of you are watching us online. I don't know whether there are details online for them. I don't know how you do it here. Do we have details online? But we can't see the online details in the building, right? Also, we can't see it in the building. Now, you people, forget the, look, your name is not Momo. Just Momo. Grace Mountain Ministry. The name is powerful. The name of the world headquarters of EAM is Love Mountain. The Harikadosh means Love Mountain. And this one is Grace Mountain. And we have Love Revolution. And some people to have grace revolution. It's powerful. There are many outside. Some people carry the envelopes and go outside. Take the envelopes outside. Those of you outside, they are coming to you. Follow this ministration. Pastor Jeff, help us. And I pray that anybody responding to this seed. It is the king's anointing. Where is prophet? God in upon prophet Felix. Join me. Help me. Take it out. Glory to God. Prophet Michael Anno. Join us. You have also become a prophet. Uh, join us. Prophet George in Tiago. Join us. Where are envelopes? Glory to God. I have three people here. Three powerful people. Somebody lift up that envelope. Begin to thank God. Those of you that are online, this is a great work. And I can tell you this great work, we have to help the great work. We have to help the great work. This work quickly has to move out of here going to bigger space. Now those of you that have done your seat, even if you are outside, I want you to find your way into the building and put it on the altar. Somebody move this pulpit a little. Before someone forget that the pulpit is not a seat for them. Don't rush. Don't rush. Don't rush. Don't rush. These are days I believe some people do big things for God. And sometimes, though not all the time, 
Sometimes I just feel that leave them to God. Let them do what God has placed in their heart to do. Some of you, it may mean take this envelope home and return it to God. Because what you feel in your heart to do, you don't even have it here. Don't leave the building. Don't leave outside. Those of you who are outside, you've left the building already, already but don't leave the environment. Obroni, that is saying, Greet Nana, the only authentic chief. All other chiefs have not reached the level yet. Father, bless every offering. Somebody come on.
offering time for granted offering is the most criticized thing about the church yet without the offering anything we are doing here will not be possible microphone will not be possible the screen will not be possible the online ministration will not be possible I remember one day Let's stop the organ for some time. One day, I remember a certain American came from uh, American. He came from America because there are Americans who come from Ghana or Zimbabwe. <laughs> this American came from America, Marco Singleton, and he came to Boga. And I told him, "Sir, I want you to come and help us to project." our music on the screen. You will not believe it. In those days, I didn't know that you couldn't project something on Wawa board. In fact, we had a plywood and that was our projector. We had a, that was the screen. That was the projector screen. screen. And we're using this um, pinhole, this box projector. And I wanted him to come and produce a digital effect with analog things. When he came, he looked at the whole thing. He said, man of God, it cannot be done. I said, why well, do something? And our mixer was a Russian-made mixer, which we couldn't read the things that were on it. And there's a guy here, he's called Samuel Bukhari. This Sami guy, he will turn uh, wherever my voice will reach. Then he will leave me there. That, that means if he leaves the place, nobody can tune my sound again. Marcus came and struggled with this thing. And I told him, I said, Marcus, how much will it cost me to change this whole thing? How much will it cost me? He said, $110,000 in those days. I said, in my language, I looked at his face, I said, white man. He, he's an African-American. I said, white man, do you know what one hundred and ten thousand dollars is. I called Reverend Clement Ancheba. I said, "Oh, I am sending you a gift." There's a man here is very anointed with American anointing. I'm saying, so I told the man, I said, "You know, we we are in a village. I'm sending you to our church in the city. They can afford it." When they came to Reverend Clement, he said, mm -mm. "He too, he can't. Too. We ran away." You know what, people? It costs a lot to set up a system like this. And to give you all the Alpha Hour, all the Grace Mountain. And those of you that are watching online, you just enjoy it. But sometimes you don't know the cost of the things you are enjoying. Everybody sitting outside, even if you are outside, respond to this offering. Those of you inside, if your offering has not hit this altar, like me, because my offering hasn't hit the altar. Somebody bring me my wallet. If your offering has not hit the altar, get up and do it. Get up and do it. Oba. You know why I like this song? Because my wife was a former Presbyterian. When you Hey, are there Presbyterians here or what? Look, 
you twins? Come on, look at twins. Those of you, the women who are believing God for twins, look at twins. Any woman believing God for twins, if you see these twins, you have twins. Ah, you know, I laid hands on them and I didn't see the other one. So when I laid hands on one and he left, I saw another one. I said, This guy has he multiplied. Everybody, 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 if you are outside, those of you that are online, don't miss this. Take your offering. Even if you didn't get an envelope, take that offering. And Father, I pray these are the offerings of kings. Some of these kings today, maybe it's even one city. But Father, see a king in the hand that is putting that offering down in the name of Jesus. How many of you enjoyed the word today? Let the king stand up. Let the king sit down. You know, people, I'm only giving you my secret. When I walk in Bogatanga, I see myself like a king. Incidentally, my name Anaba is the same as Nana. And my wife's first name is actually Nana. Anybody who was with us in school, they call her Nana. Is you the latter day saints who call her Rosemont? So whenever somebody says, greet Rosemont, I know he's latter day saint. Those who knew us from school. Like if Archbishop is asking me to greet her, he will say, greet Rosemont. He says, greet Nana. And then Archbishop wife will say, greet Nana for me. Nana. I say, hey, her name has now become American now. Mm.
God who will be Somebody lift up your hand, pray. I would have released you by now. I didn't tell you to be many. As for me, I've closed. It's you, you are too many. Magada Bazoni, the Messiah. He will accomplish it. He will accomplish Somebody lift up your hand, begin to declare I'm a king. Come on, pray. Pray you are a king. Pray you are a king. Receive the king's anointing. Tomorrow I will lay hands on many, many, many of you. Many, 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 many. Many. I will lay hands on many of you. Because the heavens will open. And the Holy Ghost will descend upon you. Hey, thank you, Jesus. But if you are outside, don't let the line discourage you. I only wish I could have some people coming from my right to make it faster. Jesus. Oh, my Jinkwa. My whole Many dado ne ma yarisa ni nyamye abramitiasi neto me hoche hosa so mi mo ni nyamye now listen can we pray for the man of God Pastor Elvis now listen let me ask you a question can you imagine you are walking about in town and you see a poster and they say witches and wizards are about to meet and the chief speaker the speaker is wizard mountain Kilimanjaro can you imagine what you do to that person that day you will pray against him sir that is what happens anytime we appear on internet and witches and wizards see us Unfortunately for us, while the witches are attacking us, our own members are attacking us. If it was only the witches and wizards, no problem. But our own members will be attacking us. Can you pray for this man of God? Pray for his wife, pray for his family. Cover him. Oh, Jesus, cover him. Cover him 
for unto this purpose, O God, this assembly is gathered to cover your son. I told him I didn't come for all of you, I came for him. Cover him. Anybody under the sound of my voice, cover this man of God. Jesus. on five people homes and businesses and families coming down by God's hand held them right now Jesus your house will not go down your business will not go down I speak upon your life in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus uh, you are here thank you friends
Your house will not go down. Jesus. Take it, sir. If you said, Yeah, what you also see, you will be Somebody is listening to me today. They brought somebody from a psychiatric hospital to this place tonight. The Lord is telling me that that person they brought from the psychiatric hospital, that person is healed tonight. No, listen. A major miracle has taken place. And the thing about it is that that person who has recovered has one and a half years to become a serious businessman in this land. I speak the anointing of God upon that person. I demand now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of depression and oppression is broken. And I speak the freedom of this one. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, lift up your hand. Glorify God tonight. Glorify God tonight. The Lord just ministered to me. That while the people are still, Lady, take your two fingers and put them in your ears. I pray right now. May God cause you to be filled with perfect peace. Any trouble on your mind. Ah! May Jehovah take hold of you. Come on. Take it right now. Ah! Peace! Man of God, this man's, this lady's mind is strong. But may peace come to your mind. Let her go. Jesus. And he said, Yes, who? Oh, Cassa, I did not. And he said, Yes, who? Oh, Cassa, I did not. Adiyanina Yeko Adiyanina Yeti Say Yesu ground where you are standing the ground is open you are standing on a ground that has cracked it's open she's standing on a ground that is open and you may think the ground open to swallow her up no the ground open and she came out of the ground i said lord i said lord what is this and the Lord said to me, a revival, a revival, a revival is what is breaking out here. But you see people, in my day, when the revival broke out, it was localized. And everybody had to come to where the revival was. But the revival that is happening in this man's life, he stands at one place and the revival is breaking out throughout the whole world. He said, if I can. After these meetings, you will see. Man of God, kings will start looking for you. That anointing on you will start attacking kings. Adieu. 
listen, man of God. There are many people who, when they heard of these two days, today and tomorrow, Spirit of God carried them and brought them. Many of them are young people. All they are looking for is an anointing. Some of them don't even know how they are going to get it. Oh, come on. You know why we are still doing this offering like that? Some people are doing it online, so leave the details online for some people. Leave it on the screen. Don't pull it off. And leave it on the screen. Don't be worried about it. Leave it. The time and the hour some people throw in a seat and an offering is usually an all time. Some people came here and they, all they want is an anointing. They are hungry. Father, give me six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six of them. Touch! Don't bring them. Just leave them where they are. I pray in the name of Jesus. Somebody came to this room. The person was ironing a shirt in a hurry to come here. The shirt bent. The iron bent the shirt and the person took another shirt and didn't even iron it well and started running here. That is how hungry people are for their Lord. These two men are not standing together for nothing. Grace is on them. Take it. The Lord said, blow in this direction. And my wind will flow to them. <laughs> I see something like a seal. It's a stamp. Now, Watch this thing carefully. Watch this thing carefully. You know, whenever I'm doing a meeting and it looks like I've ended the meeting, you should be very careful. I sit down like I'm joking, like I'm singing, like I'm playing. And when I'm singing and the music is on me, you know, I'm not a good singer. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. Odifo. Something happened to some people when I laid hands on these ones. When I spoke upon them, they went under the power and I blew on these people. I felt something like this hit some people's head. Some people felt a hand. I said, Obia, Obi, a then. No, you, you heard it like this on your head. Can I tell you this? God just stamped a stamp of approval. No, no, no. Listen. Everybody rejected you. And today, God put a seal on your head. If you are standing anywhere, and two minutes ago, you felt it like somebody had knocked you in the middle of your head. Come to me here quickly. Come to me. Now, I felt it in the middle of my head. God said, it's a stamp of approval. What happened to you? Come on, where is the microphone? What happened to you? When you blew there, I was the last person. So I just, I, 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 I just stamp of approval. Receive it. Somebody clap your hands. Now, the Lord said, I have put my stamp of approval on you. And I have granted you access. I've granted you access. Now stand. Stand. Put your hands on one another's shoulders and face the altar. Face the altar. Dear Jesus, I pray right now. There is a destiny altering sacrifice. Three of them are carrying. Father, give me the three. One, two, three. Take it. Bring them to me. 
So generation after generation keep praising you no and sums you up then I ask the Lord what need to do. Generation, generation, generation after generation.
anointing of this house. The grace of this house. Oh. This man's kingly anointing will go far. From this place, Alpha Hour, King should be raised. Oh. I see a cloud over these people here. A cloud. Look. Take it. Now. Receive it. <laughs> 
There's a cloud over you. 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 It's ready. It's ready. Oh, let the man of God sit down for me. Separate them and let them sit down for me. Listen, we are about to close. Remain standing. Remain standing. We are about to close. Uh, I hear a word. The shout of joy. sitting in a place that looked like a hairdressing salon and they were polishing their nails and their fingers pedicure and manicure somebody hold this woman before she jumped down here <laughs> I saw that they were polishing their nails and their fingers fingernails and the Lord told me they are receiving royalty treatment <laughs> remain sit down sit down Listen, there are people that are sitting down right now. I'm speaking to you. Some are watching me online. You can feel it. It's as if somebody is brushing your fingernails. Pulling them, touching them. You can feel it. It's like somebody is pulling your toenails. Like he's massaging your toenails. Listen, you are receiving the treatment of royalty. If you can feel it, like somebody is pulling your fingernails, polishing something. If you've been to a hairdressing saloon before, what do they call that place where they do the pedicure and manicure? You can feel something like that on your feet and your fingers. Start coming to me here quickly.
Father, I give you glory. Come on, let's go. before the Lord, the atmosphere is open, lift up your hands and begin to talk to God. Whatever thing that you want God to do for you, open your mouth and begin to pray. One minute, open your mouth and begin to pray. Any request that you want God to do for you, open your mouth and pray tonight. One minute prayer. Whatever challenge you are going through, whatever you want God to do for you, today and tomorrow, just lift up your voice and pray. One minute Place a request on the altar. Open your mouth and declare. Pray to God. Open your mouth and pray. One minute. Place a request on this altar. Today and tomorrow that the Lord shall answer your prayer. Lift up your voice and pray. Before you leave, just tell God something. The atmosphere is open. One minute. 30 seconds more. Lift up your voice and pray. Pray for 10 seconds. 
we are closing that your coming here shall not be in vain Velele Maroski Antelelevesh Eko Prahanteleke Labrando, your coming here in two days shall not be in vain. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. The announcement is that all the buses are ready. We have a bus going to Kasua, Medina, Adenta. So when you go out there, it shall be announced so make sure that you don't enter the wrong bus amen and tomorrow we are here for the open heaven service hallelujah shall we share the grace the love of god be with us now tell somebody after our tonight make sure you don't sleep hallelujah share the link if you are not sharing the link if you are not sharing the link, tell somebody share the link. Alpha hour, share the link. God bless you for coming. See you tomorrow. God bless you.